I'm in Switzerland for the week and I get to spend the next seven days shooting and exploring. I'm also here with a couple friends. Let's go ask them why they enjoy using their Fuji cameras. So I brought two cameras on this trip, Sony a7S III and the Fuji X100V. I love this one because it's great for like reference frames. This takes a little while to turn on, mostly the monitor, and then I gotta set the tripod up. It's really nice to have this just hanging off my neck. I can just test the frame, see if it's good, and then I have that reference frame going forward for this one. And what's it like traveling with this versus a camera like this or your RED? I mean, it's amazing. The baked in film presets are so good. I don't know, it's so easy to just, just get excited about light and just take the photo instead of having to set all this up. And Are you liking the photos you got off of here? These ones? Yeah. Dude, I love them. Like, also, I have the 28 mil extension thing. So this is regularly a 35 mil inch for 28, you know, it's like a little bit wider. So that's it's one. nice. That's a lot smaller than like a lens like this. 100%. This morning we woke up in Murin, which is a small town halfway up a mountain. Last night when we went to bed, everything was dark and we could see that we were in a mountainy area, but we really had no idea what we were in for. So when the sun came up this morning, we all got super stoked because this is the craziest mountain town that I've ever been to. You've got to take two cable cars to get up to this mountain and there's no vehicles that are allowed up here. I was shooting some stuff with the Sony, but a good chunk of the shots were shot on my phone and on the Fuji. This morning, we are in Ladderbruin, and it is equally as beautiful. It is a town in the middle of this valley. It is a lot more tourist heavy, but there is a lot more shops and a lot more angles to explore. For the next few hours, we wandered around these tiny villages, and honestly, I don't know where one village ended and the next began. Like, there was just houses everywhere. I freaking love this camera. I feel like in, since I got it, I have taken all of my favorite photos I've ever taken to date have been on that camera. I love the look and feel of just nostalgic film. I used to shoot a bunch of film, I was real garbage at it. And so film shots would get ruined. You don't actually know if you get the shot. The reason I bought the original, the x one View was Mark convinced me, but um, my brother and then his, at the time, fiance got the keys to their first house, a super big moment. They had their brand new two little dogs and I had taken a photo of it on um, some black and white film and I had, my mirrorless was in the car, but I was like, nah, I'm gonna shoot it on film because it's a really cool moment. And then when the film got developed, something happened with the roll and then that was the only shot in the roll that, that got destroyed. And I didn't have a backup and they asked me for that shot and then that was it. But like just now I was shooting down in the valley here. It's like the most beautiful valley I've seen my entire life. And I have my mirrorless camera and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna shoot on the X1RB as well. And as soon as I look at the back of the camera, I'm like, I love that. It's small, I can put it in my pocket, I can put it in my bag. To be honest, I shoot mine mostly on auto settings because the point is for the memories, not for technical stuff. Yeah, it's like literally, I change the aperture and that's it. And then the film simulations. And the film simulations are incredible. I've talked to a few dudes who are like film buffs and they can't tell the difference. So I love it. I found the X100V to be amazing for travel. Last year, my wife and I went on a vacation to Las Vegas, and that was the only camera that I took, and I was pretty happy with the shots that I got from the trip. This trip in Switzerland is a little bit less of a vacation. We're here because we're shooting some specific stuff for the tourism board and a couple other companies, so we did need to bring some specific lenses. Unfortunately, I think all of our backpacks are a little bit heavier than we were all hoping that they would be, but that's part of the job. I would love to go on a vacation with a bunch of my friends where we can just bring smaller cameras and we can shoot whatever we want with no obligations. I know it would be very freeing to not have to carry these large backpacks around and not have to worry about cords and chargers and batteries. On this trip, I'm also trying out this Freewell case and they sent me a bunch of lenses as well. This right here is the 18 millimeter wide. It's great because you put it on the really good sensor of your camera and it makes it wider. I know we already have a wide camera on our phone, but this is a lot better. And the lenses just screw on and off really easily. They also sent me a couple other items. I did not bring them on this trip specifically, but if you want to see more about those, let me know and I can make a dedicated video just about those. We did some exploring in the area before we headed to our next location and Chris made a new friend with this guy named Albert. I was like, I was like, hey. He was like, hello. And I was like, can I take a picture? <laughs> yeah. It's Scott, sick. Look at that. Him. Oh, that's so sick. Dude. Dude, I was going to take on the foods and this one was, was in like, my hand. I was like, oh no. 
we gathered our things and went further up the mountain to this place called Peace Gloria at the top of Shilthorn. Right now, we're at one of the highest points in all of Switzerland. We had to take three trains, a bus, and four cable cars to get up to this spot. And somehow, we are staying at the top of this gondola for the evening. Something that I don't think anybody gets to do. Okay, how is it looking on the drone? It's pretty sick. We've got the new DJI Mavic 3 Pro, triple cameras. So we're on the 3X zoom. And it's looking pretty money. seven o'clock in the morning and we are the only ones up here. We just slept over on the top of this mountain. Now some of the worst sleeps of our lives. For me, it's a headache and I'm not sure if it's from the elevation or just lack of sleep. The sun has come up a little bit more and we're gonna try and walk out here and see what we can get. Next, we headed to Zermatt, which is the town at the base of Matterhorn. Maybe you've heard of this iconic mountain before. I was so impressed that there's lifts all over this mountain range and even a train to access the top of it. We took the train up the hill from Zermatt to come see Matterhorn. We were hoping that that alpine lake would show the reflection of the mountain. Turns out that it's frozen and Mark has already fallen in. Fuji, why do you like Fuji? The color in the film sims is so easy to work with and so beautiful, but the real reason for me that I love it is the sort of the accessibility of it and the, um, maybe the allure. They pack all their like, oh, you know, great. powerhouse, like main body, professional bodies, like full of specs. And then on top of that, they're like professional lenses are so reasonably priced, right? Like this is their, 20 to 4 to 70 equivalent to eight, and it's $1,500 brand new. And it's weather sealed, stabilized. So like for me, you just can't beat that regardless of what area of your career you're in, uh, professional or, you know, amateur hobbyist. It's just, it's just so good. And what camera are you shooting on? I have the X-T5, which is uh, like a great hybrid camera. It's 40 megapixels, it's crop sensor, but if you know what light you're shooting in and how you're shooting, that's not gonna matter. How, how deep did you fall in? Right here. Literally first thing. I know. <laughs> we actually did find a lake that gave us a reflection and Mark made sure to not fall in the lake this time. Mark owns a Fuji X100V, but decided to mix it up on this trip and he brought a completely different compact camera, the Leica Q2. It's still older, the used market is great right now, which makes this camera way more attainable than buying the new Q3. So what I love about using a camera like this is the compact portability, but still having a great image quality at the end of the day, compared to having a Sony mirrorless or Nikon or Canon. Uh, when you're traveling, it's a larger camera with larger lenses, it bounces around or you're forced into taking a bag versus having a camera like this that can fit in your pocket or tucked into your jacket as well. What I love specifically about this camera is its full frame sensor. Um, so the image quality difference is noticeable compared to a Fuji X100, which I still have as well. The film presets are amazing, um, but if you're only gonna bring one camera, then this is probably the camera that I would take with me. We explored a bit more of Matterhorn and the Zermatt area before we headed to Zurich before flying back home. My back is in a lot of pain from this trip because I brought so much camera gear and as small as my Sony setup is versus like the other manufacturers, I would still love to downsize even more. <laughs> if you found this video interesting, I think you'll also enjoy this video on how I plan on leaving all my prime lenses at home. <laughs>